everybody. I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. And I'm Camilla. Today we're taking a look at Explorers of Navoria, in which you are in a magical land of Navoria. New continents have shown up, and so you need to go explore them. Hmm. That's a lot of theme. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> accompanied with a lot of really cool artwork. Yes. I like the artwork in this game a lot. Um, and I was kind of surprised that this theme <laughs> was not quite there. It's um, not, yeah. You thought this might be a different kind of game, didn't you? I. That's what it is. That's what we all kind right. of thought looking at the. the that's on me. It's the not on the game. The and the look and the sort of whimsical nature, we expected something different. But we should, right. you know, yeah, yeah. probably take a look first at how this game works. Let's do it. Explorers of Navoria is made up of three rounds. And at the beginning of each round, players are going to be claiming cards over here. You're going to claim three or four cards, depending on the number of players. What you'll do is you'll draw two tokens from a bag here. So I've drawn two purple. I don't have an option. I'm going to put one here in the town center, the other on top of the purple cards, and I'll take one of these purple cards, which is not replaced until the end of the round. Then the next person pulls these two colors, so they might say, hmm, I'll take this and take one of the yellow cards. Now, once there's tokens in the town center, you don't have to pull tokens from the bag. You can say, ooh, I wanted a blue card. I'm going to do that and take that blue card. And you're going to keep doing that till all the cards have been taken. Maybe not all the cards. There'll be three cards left over. Once everyone has a certain number of cards, then you're going to go through the round again, starting with the person who in last place. And they're going to take one of these, and they're going to place it on a spot and get the rewards. This one gives me two apples and a resource of my choice. This one gives six victory points and so on and so forth. Once all these tokens are off, then we'll end the round. Let's take a look at the different kinds of cards. There are yellow cards that will let you build trading posts and also move along paths. Here you get points, resources. Each player has trading posts. When you have a trading post, you're going to take one of these trading posts and you're going to put it at the first spot on the uh, associated track that's on the board. So let's say I'm putting on this bottom track. I put my first trading post here my second one here, and my third one there. Uh, each player can have up to three trading posts. Now these trading posts have a, a couple things. You're also moving the person on the track. You're moving people on the track because whoever's the farthest on the track will get points, but you're also going to score points for every flag you've passed, and you can even get bonus points if you get to the end of the track. At the end of each round, the person that you have walking is going to get reset to the beginning or to wherever your first trading post is. Which means if they didn't even move and you built three trading posts, they would get moved all the way to the front. Red cards are going to score you points at the end of the game. Green cards give you resources. There's three kinds of resource in this game. There's crystals, apples, and swords. And when you get these, you need to put them on these different areas here. And when I have one of each here, or four of anything here, or three of the same here, I'll discard them and get the bonuses that's listed here. This one, for example, lets me move on the one path and then gives me a point for every green card I have. However, if the trading posts are gone, I'll get more bonuses. So if all three of these are gone and anytime I get the three different resources here, I'm going to get I'm going to get to move on the path, two points for every green card and then another four bonus points. Blue cards and pink cards will give you things during what's called an income phase at the end of a round. So this one gives a point for every one of these symbols I have on cards. This gives a point for every flag that I've passed, and they can do various other things as the game progresses. And so that's what the different color cards are doing. Cards also have one or two symbols of different types on them, and that's going to matter because at the top of the board, we're going to put some endgame scoring conditions in which you can claim one of these once you have five of that particular face. So if I have five of this face, I'll claim up here, and at the end of the game, I'm going to get three points for every green card I have. And that's pretty much the game. You'll do some resetting in between rounds, reset turn order, because turn order matters a lot in this game, and whoever has the most points at the end is the winner. All right, so production-wise... I'm really happy with this. I like the player mm -hmm. boards. Although, my one complaint would be the player boards, since you have to put these little houses on them. Yeah. I wish they were dual layered. Because yes, that kind of was a little so. messy. They have a fake dual layer kind of 
They're indented, indented right? right? I don't and know it if it doesn't it's, really do a thing. Yeah, I don't know I, if it's indented or if they're embossed. I don't remember, but it's I, one of the yeah, two. Yeah, it's like I very guess little. So, right. Yeah, I definitely would have, and I did have the the issue of like them falling over a couple sure. times. So I do wish that they were even if it was just single layer and then just punched all the way through something like that. But it either need yes. to be one of the two. Um, I'd say or flat tokens, but I don't want flat tokens. I want the whole yeah. houses. <laughs> but that's huts. really nitpicky, to be fair. Yeah. I think because the production and the artwork here really are superb. And this the pieces is, are nice. Yeah. The whole thing looks really good. Packaging even like this. The box is small for the amount of content in there. Like it's it uses its space well. I thought right. And this is not deluxe components, right? Like the wood. The wood uh, no, this shits is the that you're pulling game, out. I think, yeah. I think that's really cool that the base, the the what you're going to get off the shelf feels upgraded and deluxe I think already. Oh, so, yeah. I think this is it. To that end, you know, you said the game, I feel like this is a smaller game than you're expect uh, than we were expecting, right? Yeah. Because it, it shows these cards on the side of the board and you have three face up and you're like, whoa, big card yeah. spreads and stuff. And you are getting a total of nine or... Nine to twelve cards over the course of the yeah, game. Yeah, it's very few, right? Yeah, I don't remember. Yeah, it's, so it's not very many. You get these cards, and you're like, oh. And I, I, I don't want this to sound negative. It just that was a the the look of the game. I was like, we're going on a grand adventure. Nope, we're playing a card drafting game essentially, mm -hmm. and then a worker placement out to move on tracks and things. Worker selection, kind of, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that was the most surprising thing to me. It's not the game that I expected, but I also went in not knowing what to expect. I remember looking at the Kickstarter and then looking at the SN preview and being like, I don't really understand how this game's going to work, but I'm really excited for it. And I'm not saying it disappointed. It was just definitely a halfway through the game. I'm like, oh, even not knowing what to expect, this isn't the game I expected. That's not necessarily bad. It was just kind of caught me off guard. Now, I do like the card drafting mechanism. It works pretty well. It does not give a huge advantage to the it's kind of a weird first player advantage because the first person can grab two tokens yeah, and they get to pick between them as long as they're not the same color and they get to pick a card and they get the first cards. They're going to take the mm -hmm. card they want the most. Whoever's second now has a slight – they can take that color or pour two new ones. Right. It's a different advantage, right? Because the first player is they, – they might want a specific card, but if they don't get that color, they're not going to get it. Yeah. But that means they are going to have – first choice on all of the rows of whatever they draw out. Now the second one has a little bit of information so I think it does kind of balance that way in, you know, advantage because you get the first of everything, but then the second player has that little bit of foresight to be like, or is that the first one that I wanted and first player didn't take it, so I get it. And at the end of the game, it's a fun system to play yeah. with. It's a, it's a fun two-parter uh, with the card drafting part, like you're saying, being this, pull two tokens, ooh, yes, I got blue, whatever, I wanted that, or take one of the open ones. And then the flip side of that, the second half, where you're using all these mm -hmm. tokens to work or placement, take resources, take whatever. Now that's, that the, is... that's the meat and potatoes of this yeah. game. And it's a fun system. It is. But I'm saying on the flip side, when you when you do the reverse, yeah. that is player advantage for sure. First is the sure, best. Sure, absolutely, yeah. Mm -hmm. But that is also the person who had the fewest points in the previous round, so that kind of evens out. Right. Yeah, it's a catch-up mechanism that doesn't scream catch-up. Yeah. You know, I like that. So there's a lot of unused space there's a big board there's tracks and stuff and it, but it but it looks pretty but the game itself is i place a token take a card the cards kind of mesh pretty well you should not take all of one type mm -hmm. uh probably the tokens collecting them i had a hard time getting into the theme of whatever that meant i collect the three swords and now this card goes off but you got to keep an eye on that scoring especially or also yeah. those in between round scorings yeah 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 my only problem game mechanism-wise is I would like to seed the top of the board. Instead of putting out four random objectives, I think I would like to put out ones of different colors mm. because it seems okay. that if there's, like, several for green, then green yeah. cards are sure. so valuable. Everyone just takes them, and it takes away from the, the, choicing of, the choice of the game. Yeah, it kind of sets the economy in not a good way. Um, there's also the turn order thing in the middle oh, and we all have a problem is, oh, with that. that's a real problem and yeah. it's um and you pointed out that it really wouldn't be a problem with three players two yeah. or three it wouldn't matter because yeah. you're going one way around the table or the yeah. other way around the table it's really only with four mm -hmm. where it might be like one two three four mm -hmm. and then it reverses for the second half so that's annoying and the clarity of that go in this order in this in the middle with a few tokens thrown on there to represent our colors it's not very 
It's it's not great. I'd rather have yeah. like a big number in front of me or something. Or even that, I feel like if those were just in a straight line, you know, I mean, we're all yeah. used to that. We put it in line. Or if it had to be a circle, then it's like one, two, three, four on the outside of the compass rows, you know, something like that. I feel like it just it wasn't clear enough to ever make real sense. I, I think useful. at the end of the day, I was like, okay, at the end of the round, I was like, okay, so this next round, I go after who? All right, cool. Don't say anything else. I don't, nope, I don't get that. I don't need it. <laughs> you yeah. know, it's like, and I just know that so-and-so goes, it's my turn next. It was very unclear. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the game is an engine builder, but it's not a big one. And I think that's that's a positive thing. Mm-hmm. A lot of times these engine building games with cards are so over the top. I'm like, oh, how much stuff does everyone have? Here I have a few cards. Some of them go off at the end of the game. Some of them go off at the end of the round. Some happen only when I take them. It's not yeah. hard to figure out. I'm collecting sets of the same symbol if possible. I like it. It's a very pleasant game. I don't know how else to describe it. Like It says 20 minutes per player. That seems very accurate. Mm-hmm. It's a nice midway style game that I think people will like. It's a very Euro-ish game with the colorful trappings. I'd, yeah. I'd give it a 7, a 7 out of 10. It's just, it's just fun. It's easy to play. I'm coming a little higher. I come in at an 8 on this one. I, I think what you said right there when you said it's just a very pleasant game. I found that. I found myself happy through playing the game. Mm-hmm. I definitely found that each round ends just, I want one more action. And the game, I want one more. And that is just such a good tension. The more you play it, you know it's just going to be a little shorter than you want, which keeps you salivating, keeps you thinking about it. I really liked the balance of, like you were saying, do you go hard into one color? No, not really. You do a little bit of everything, but also making sure you're having the right sets for the uh, collection, those end games. Um, I I really like going up the tracks and then being able to put the huts down to kind of save your progress. And do you go into that? Or uh, when you're taking the tokens, do you go straight up just for points? So both uh, two parts, you know, you have the first, the drafting part, and you have the second part, the the execution, I guess, you know, of the other tokens. I like them both equally and for very different reasons, and they come together really well and just make me want more. Like you said, a couple little graphical issues with it yeah. that kind of snag but don't hold the game up, you know, by any means. Um, yeah, I just find this to be very, very pleasant. I'm going to give it the same. I'm coming down at an eight. Um I also thought it was a very comforting, almost comfortable kind of game. Uh, That central mechanism, the sort of, you know, card drafting worker placement forwards and backwards is very clever. There's a few other moving parts that are subtly engaging, but the game never sort of hits you over the head with, here's lots to think about. It kind of worms its way into you doing those things in a very subtle way, in a very slow, gentle way, like, oh, I got some apples. Mm, Oh, I'll start working on this. But, yeah, it's not heavy-handed, and I like that. I like that about it. I, The caveat, one of my caveats being, again, I think I'll avoid it at four. I I think I'll stick Mm -hmm. with three or two. But um, Because of the turn order? Because of the turn order. It's just so much easier if you play with three, I I think, and you're not... I feel like you wouldn't lose a whole lot. You also get to draft an extra card, which is kind of fun. Yeah, and... so a couple of small issues like that, but it's it's a beautiful game. It's a nice package. This is one that I could see myself pulling off the shelf if I want something comfortable, something that is going to not be brain dead, but I want to enjoy pretty hard work and reach in a bag and shake out some tokens. You know, some some that's fun, dynamic, didactic. You know, something uh, of that nature. I really like it. Well, there you go, folks. That's Explorers of Novoria. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Tom. I'm Z. And I'm Camilla. And we're drafting cards.